In this video, we answer what to look for when viewing a home, how long does it take, and how you should prepare. That's starting right now. Welcome to Home Buyer School, brought to you by Brookfield Residential. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to another Home Buyer School video, a channel where you get the latest strategy, tactics, and tips from home buying experts. And remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to get the latest strategies from the experts, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything. So today I'm joined by Kevin French, realtor with Remax Realty. And the question we're going to answer is what to look for when viewing a home. So what are some things that you're looking for when you're actually viewing a show home? A show home specifically? Yes. A show home or a home that you're thinking of buying. So whether it's a show home or a resale, or, or a resale home. Yeah. Okay. Um, quality and finish. So uh, I think it goes without saying you're going to look at it already ticks the boxes of you want the three bedrooms or the four bedrooms or whatever your needs are. And that's why mm -hmm. you're in that property. But then from there, you're going to look at, does the home feel like it's well taken care of? Mm -hmm. Does the home feel like it's properly built? Does the home seem to have any safety concerns? Um, and then is it have, does it have an open concept? is obviously very big for resale. So does it feel like it's a, the, a great area to entertain in? Um, everybody has different needs, but mm -hmm. like without a doubt, uh, the mass wants an open concept. They want the home to feel bright and open. And then understanding your exposure that you're going to be getting. So if you have a, an, end, well, an end unit home, I guess for the block, or an end unit townhouse, what kind of what kind of sunshine is going to come through? Mm -hmm. Having a home that shows very bright and feels feels very large is always better in the end than something that feels very dark and closed off. Yeah. Walking through the home, though, you're gonna you'll be able to pick up on numerous small things throughout, mm -hmm. and that'll give you a feeling that the home is well taken care of and it feels good yeah. to be here, or it feels like it's been abused or poorly poorly constructed. Right. So for a resale home, like if the person has hired a really good realtor like yourself, and um, and they do a, a really good job of preparing the home, a, maybe a, a, a too good of a job that you don't see some of the flaws or things. So are there things that you should really key in on when you're going into, to, let's say, a specifically a resale home that could be hidden by the marketing or the, the really great house prep that that realtor or that person has done? So they shouldn't be hiding anything that's a material latent defect. So that's, of course, a defect that is yeah. uh, expensive to fix and can't be seen or can't be easily discoverable through mm -hmm. a home inspection. Um, but, yeah, I would say most, most of the time the properties are going to show as they are. Yeah. Um, you can get caught up in that the space feels larger than it does because yeah. it has a large, uh, sorry, a smaller scale furniture mm -hmm. that makes the living room feel like it's large. Now, a lot of people have their furniture that they're intending to bring with them and they're gonna measure accordingly and see how it fits or they can buy new stuff. But the reality is if this looks like it seats four, it doesn't seat four comfortably if you were to use this furniture. So think about it in the way that you're actually gonna use the space. Mm -hmm. On the other side, there's people who don't properly take the, take the proper steps prior to listing and the properties don't look, they don't show at their best. Yes. So you, you turn a corner and they've got a sectional that closes off the living room and then the kitchen's on this side. It mm -hmm. feels uncomfortable. So the sectional should be really positioned differently. It, it. Even though that's not in line with the TV directly, which yeah. is a big thing, yeah. um, it makes the space feel more open. Mm -hmm. So a seller, sorry, a buyer would go into a property and say it feels small, it feels closed off. Um, it it's, could be the exact same home they just saw that they loved. Mm -hmm. And that's the same layout. But they feel like it's that because of the way everything's positioned. So getting beyond that, that's actually working in your favor as a buyer because the seller didn't do take the proper steps prior to listing to make it show at its best. So they're getting negative feedback, particularly in this market, over and over again. It feels small, feels closed off, feels dark. Don't like the, the feature wall paint that's burgundy, black, dark gray. Um, those things should all be taken care of prior to listing so that it feels larger. But if they don't know that ahead of time and they're not doing that work ahead of time, mm -hmm. they're gonna think the only solution they have for selling is price reductions. Oh, and they'll yeah. just keep pricing it lower and lower until ultimately it will sell. But you can take advantage of that by, by understanding yep. the realities of the space. Yeah. So how long should a typical viewing last for? So like, how long should you, like, if you just walked, like if we walked through this show home, right? So it was really nice, everything's prepped. You can go through it, what, five, 10 minutes? But, but, but should you take longer? Five, 10 minutes, if you're doing, typically you can book a second showing. Mm -hmm. Most people who are interested, they don't just 
go through one time for 10, 15 minutes and say, let's buy the home. They book a second showing, they go through more thorough and that's where they'd spend 45 up to an hour. And then from there they make an offer if the offer is accepted, then they have a home inspection and then they're gonna be in there for two to three hours at that time. Got it. And is there anything I should do to prepare uh, when I'm actually going to, to view a home? Is there like a checklist I need to do or, or I, I probably just don't wanna show up and just have a look at the home, right? Yeah, you would want to make a list and I, there's generic lists out there that uh, real estate agents have or could have and would use that just say, you know, the basics of the community, the size, the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, you are going to want to make your own wish list, mm -hmm. essentially, of what you're looking for. And if you and describe what your day to day life is, if it's if it's coming home and relaxing and watching TV, you don't necessarily need a big open space mm -hmm. um, for entertaining. If it's having people over for dinner, then you're going to want a space that's uh, that can ho hold a large dining table, probably seating at the island if if there is one, things like that. Um, if you want to have more than two children, you're probably going to want a fourth bedroom. But yeah. thinking about those things above grade, or if you want them in the basement, typically you're going to find the fourth bedroom in the basement. But if you want the fourth bedroom to be above grade, it's a lot harder to find. But those are all things you make your own wish list mm -hmm. essentially while you're shopping that's custom to what your needs are got it and let's talk about like yes you want to view inside the house but is there anything you want to do outside the home whether it's around the property or even like the general neighborhood what are some things that anything that you want to take a look at yeah so, while you're there right yeah so the exterior of the property is mostly going to be covered through the home inspection but it's making sure that the roof is in good condition all the exterior, the siding, the eaves troughs, everything are, are as they should be. And then from there, consider how you want to landscape the property. Do you want to build a deck or do you want to build a patio? Mm -hmm. Patios, in my opinion, give a lot more privacy because they're on the ground. So mm -hmm. then you can only have a six foot fence. You're sitting there versus sitting, you know, three or four feet in the air. You can see over the fence, see all your neighbors. And they can see you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can see you. So thinking about the landscaping aspect and then when you leave there, it's what's the proximity to any parks. Those are important. Yeah. Um, proximity to amenities and then like, like I said, sometimes you can get trapped. You, you go out and you look at a brand new home or you look at a resale property mm -hmm. and you're looking at 15. So it's two minutes to get to this one, two minutes to get to that one. And you don't realize by the end of it, the home that you love is 15 minutes in the back of the community. So yeah. then you go ahead and you purchase that home and then you realize, well, I purchased it at Saturday afternoon at three o'clock and now I have to go to work at 7 a.m. And it takes me 25 minutes to get out of my community. Yeah. That can be frustrating. So I encourage people if they're serious about a property and concerned about that, um, go there and spend a Monday morning, get back in the community and then leave at the time that you'd leave for work. Um, it seems crazy to be doing that, but you're going to live here for years and years. Yes, it's worth well. one, it's yeah. worth one day. Yeah. 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 I think so too. And like, I think, you know, maybe, maybe not all the show homes you visit, but like the one that you really feel attached to or the house take that drive to work and see like actually how long it yeah. actually takes right and maybe do it mm. and this sounds crazy but maybe do it during rush hour because like it's oh, easy always do it during rush yeah, hour yeah, right? for sure so get a real understanding yeah. of what of what it is yeah. do it at your normal schedule yeah. yeah yeah so if you want to learn more about how to prepare when buying a house check out our video above in the description below so kevin do you have anything else to add in terms of what to look for when viewing a house uh, i would say the most important is the people get caught up in that I often mm -hmm. see mistakes within is square footage is not the exact same across the board. And I think that that's pretty obvious, but um, if it's a thousand square feet here, it's not a thousand square feet there or there, they're all configured differently. Mm -hmm. So having an intelligently designed home goes much, much further. And the biggest thing when you're looking at um, townhouses or attached homes is width. So a lot of people don't understand this home feels so much larger and it's the same size as the last one. It often comes down to the width of the home mm -hmm. and feeling like you're closed in and in a narrow place that has lots of length and the, but you're doing, you know, a direct set of stairs and then set of stairs and set of stairs. So you've got three stories mm -hmm. that have 1500 square feet, or you can have a wider property that has 1500 square feet over two stories, which feels much more like a single family detached home. It feels much more comfortable. Okay. So the question of the day I have for you is, what do you look for when you go visit a show home or a home that you're interested in buying? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you wanna know more about home buying and the home buying process, make sure to watch our videos here, as well as don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep learning from the experts. Thank you and we'll catch you in our next video.